point. Um, if loving you is wrong, fans, I think you're, I think you're getting this review early because sometimes you know I will do my reviews like the next day slash morning because it's 11:55 p.m. on Tuesday night, meaning that by the time I get this re review recorded and edited, it will already be Wednesday. But you're getting the review a few hours early, and cross your fingers because I did take notes and I have the screenshots. You might get your trailer breakdown early as well. Before going any further, uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Um, while I'm doing the review, maybe something pops into your mind. Comment below on some of your favorite moments from tonight's episode. And you know the drill. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Shout out to the patrons over on Patreon. And as always, which is not mandatory, you can make a donation to the channel on PayPal or Cash App. The PayPal link is in the description. And the Cash App um, scan will be towards the very end of the video. You know how it goes by now. But tonight's episode is pretty good. Uh, the red paint. And um, so we pretty much start off the episode. And yes, I did read the comments on my video I posted about OWN versus BET, which show has like the most, which network has the most commercials during their shows. Pretty much, it, it, it stands to reason that we're all kind of in the, um, the flow of things on OWN. We get about the episode recap. We get maybe two to three-ish minutes of the actual episode. And then the, uh, it would go to commercial break from like 10 03, 10 04 to like 10 09 or 10 10. So we almost get 10 damn minutes of commercials before we even wet our mouths on the, uh, or as you know, I say, wet my beak. You could barely wet your beak with the episode before we go to commercial break. But long story short, Carl leaves because of the awkward moment between Kelly and Lucian. Um, Kelly's so happy and it's like, look, I'll, I'll invite you over to dinner. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll call you. It's like, okay, well, um, no problem at all. I'll talk to you later because Carl's probably thinking this is super awkward or damn, where's my kiss? But he just leaves. Lucian is like, oh, Kelly, what's going on here? Like, oh, what's going on? Cause first of all, it's like Kelly, no offense, but you know, um, I don't know where your mouth's been since you've been in jail. Not saying you've been up to nothing, but you know, I know the food in here probably ain't that good and you know, shower and clean everything just, uh, -uh. But in any case, Lucian's like, you know, hey, come on, this is kind of a, you know, invasion of personal space, and you know I'm with Natalie, that's the only woman for me, but Kelly explains, oh, it was just harmless, I was, I was just happy, you, you, you don't think I was coming on to you, like, don't get me wrong, I know when emotions are involved, it's easy to just do something out of excitement, but th like I said in the video, um, um, I think I did a video about the kiss, I'm pretty sure I did. It, there's a difference between just like a peck on the cheek or something like that, but Kelly full on like grabbed Lucian, like put her arms around his neck and brought him in for the kiss. And hell, I don't think we um got like the lower frame of their bodies, but you know, on the Princess Diaries, uh, Princess Mia was doing that thing where she wanted what was it like? She knew it would be real love if she kissed kissed a guy and like uh what was it like? She did the foot lift or whatever. I don't even know. Maybe Kelly did the foot lift and we ain't get it on screen. I don't know. But all I'm saying is what Kelly did is the prime example of girls who like to flirt but say, oh, no, I wasn't trying to lead you on. First of all, you drew me in for the kiss. You literally just slapped one on me while I was just doing my job. I was unlocking the gates. And guess what? You think you could just stroll on in, pull me up. Well, excuse me. Pull me down to your height for a kiss. It's like, come on now. So Lucian's trying to like say, okay, um, let's, well, what's going on here? This, this, this is what? And then like, no, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't flirting or anything like that. I was just happy. Like, okay, sure. I know it seems like I'm rambling, but the scene kind of did ramble on itself because you know how this show is. But after we get back from commercial break, I believe, um, Lucian's like, okay, well, let's never speak of this again. And we ain't going to tell nobody it happened. But guess who has video footage of this? It's good old Eddie. Isn't it ironic? And while he's trying to, you know, defend the fact, hey, this is my personal phone. Lucian's like, I will take it from you. You know, I shot you before. Yeah, I remember. So basically, Lou goes in. Look, I ain't, look, I know um, this is a show and it's plot. But if you ask me, didn't it seem like Lucian went in for the phone a little slower than I think we know he's capable of? Don't get me wrong. I mean, hand-eye coordination. But I just feel like 
if that were me, I would have like bum rush Eddie for that damn phone. Like, I don't feel like Lucian put enough mm, trying to get it. It just felt like he extended his arm and then Eddie could have easily like, you know, no, no, no. That I don't know. Again, I know it's acting and everything, but I just feel like I didn't believe Lucian was really going for the phone. Was that just me? But in any case, Eddie decides to like put it either, you know, right in front of his private part or in his pants or whatever. And he's like, oh, yeah, you want to reach down for it? And then he he's, he pretty much, you know, starts to make fun of Kelly. Kelly's like, no, I'm gone. I'm out of here. I got out. Everything you said is like, until you do right by me, all the evil you thought you could do, it didn't work. Hallelujah. And yeah, so, oh, yeah, that's right. Talking about the Ten Commandments. Yeah, but you killed a man. All right. Yeah, keep talking about the Bible. And then he calls, um, um, shoot. I wrote down the name by Armadi, Armadi. Armadi, basically, it's a guy he knows saying, hey, when you get that video I sent you, I'm going to need you to edit it for me. It's like, bow, chicka, bow, wow. This fool, Eddie. So, Larry pops up, tells me, hey, you got 24 hours to give me the $50,000 back because you played me. You said there were no other copies of the photos or anything. So, either, okay, so at this point, either Larry thinks that Eddie conned him because, oh, yeah, you had, there were copies of the photos and you just gave them to someone else, but Based on the conversation, I'm thinking that maybe Larry asked Eddie about the photos and everything, which he did in the previous episode. But Eddie was honestly under the impression that these were the only ones. So he was unaware that people like Carl or whoever else would have access to other photos. So I feel like, I think that maybe Larry doesn't feel like Eddie cheated him. It's just like, Eddie didn't tell him everything he needed to know because Eddie honestly did not know there were other photos in existence. So it's almost like, you know, um, here's a perfect example, you know, going back to school days, like if you make a trade with somebody, like let's say you buy a video game or if you trade a video, you know how it is sometimes, whether it be Pokemon cards, an actual video game card, whatever the case may be. Like, I'm just trying to make an example here. This is like me saying, Hey, um, take this game. It, it works perfectly. I played it a few times. I finished it. I didn't like it. Now I want to, you know, trade it off to something. So basically it's like you trade it to someone else. They give you something that you want. And then you think, you know, that's it. Because what is it like? No gives these backseats. But then as soon as you, they get the game, they figure out the game isn't as good as you made it out to be or something like that. And then they decide it was a bad trade. So I want, you know, my return on what I trade you. It was like, hell no. And then they, they threaten you. I know that's just a beer comparison, but you know what I mean. So basically, he makes a phone call saying, oh, yeah, these some powerful people who want that money back. So he makes the call right in front of Eddie saying, hey, come by my office. I need to talk to you about a $50,000 problem. And Eddie brushes it off. But Larry, oh, boy, Larry. OK, so then we go over to Bennett and Tanya. A pretty sweet scene between the two. It was kind of good to see a slower scene in the midst of everything going on. But. I'm still wondering why they were introduced during the final, right before the final season of the series. But in any case, um, she sees through thing. Hang on a second. Oh, basically she notices that Randall keeps going to the trash, um, because there's a lot of stuff. I don't know if it's a lot of trash and she's pretty much asking whether or not Bennett did something to the house because remember that that wasn't his first time doing that kind of thing. He's done it in previous neighborhoods they lived in. And um, he asked whether or not, you know, Randall has been talking to her or anything is like, no, 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 he hasn't been doing anything because she finds him interesting and, you know, she's curious about him. It's like, oh, yeah, was it like a dork? He never leaves home. First, of all, I take offense by that because, well, I work from home, too, and I don't really go out like Randall does so it's like my dork so um basically they also talk about the fact that she knows she's a handful and I've talked to my parents and my dad said I can move back home you know because it's a, a lot of stress on you so it's probably discussions that they had in the past because Tanya probably doesn't understand why Bennett's with her despite everything she I guess you could say all of her shortcomings and the fact she has a lot of baggage and that's probably weighing a lot of stress on Bennett. But he reassures her, no, we're staying here. Don't worry about it. 
And um, then we go over to Bennett and Randall. Randall's taking out the trash. She meets up with Bennett in the middle of the street because remember, there's rarely any traffic in this um, neighborhood. And even when there is, people get hit by cars like Brad did last week when Esperanza was driving. But um, he apologizes to Bennett and asks if um, he saw anyone coming in to vandalize his home. And he's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So you didn't seem surprised by that. The fact that you just moved into this neighborhood. I just told you somebody vandalized my home and you don't even. Oh, yeah. Uh, how, how is everything? Um, is everything OK? Uh, what, what happened? So pretty much Randall is a bit suspicious by Bennett's reaction to the news about his home being vandalized. He also says, like, you know, I could be the neighbor from hell. I was in the Marines before I was a firefighter. So pretty much, you know, they pretty much, you know, um, uh, match swords with each other, if you will, before Bennett leaves. And we go over to Johnny and Alex over at the bar. He asked her about Randall and she reassures him, don't worry, he's not going to come back. And he tries to give her a coffee because he cuts her off because she's obviously way too drunk to, you know, do anything. So Esperanza and she goes on a whole spiel about how I'm done with that kind of life, the safe life. This is a soccer mom and there are some hot soccer moms. Like, I ain't gonna lie, they're pretty yeah, there's some hot yeah, I don't need some hot soccer moms out there. So Esperanza and Steven come in and uh, you know, Steven tries to pull a Randall, like, hey, I don't want to drink. And he's like, Okay, you don't drink, then you gotta wait outside. Steven flashes the badge and he's like, Oh, my bad. And I'm like, Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. So Esperanza tells um Alex about how Brad had to call an ambulance because Marcy had the baby on the stomach and guys I could have sworn that Marcy was not the one that put the baby into the crib the baby was sitting on the coffee table in that like car seat when Marcy left look I gotta go back and watch that episode the one before the episode before I, I'll I, I'll make sure to do that because I could have sworn Marcy was not the one that put the baby in the crib so um Esperanza pretty much appeals to Alex. I love the fact that she showed a baby picture. Become like, oh, I forgot how cute the baby was. So long story short, pretty much says, look, don't you owe it to your kids to explain to them why you're leaving and not coming back. So with that being said, they get her to leave. Then we go back over to the police station and Bennett's going in to talk with Rick, most likely before he goes back to work, because I believe he said he came home to have lunch with his wife. And again, that was a sweet scene, talking about the cooking and whatnot. Makes me feel like, damn it, I wish I had somebody. I'm tired of eating microwave dinners. So Bennett and Rick are in there, and he wants to file a police report about a neighbor that harasses his wife, Randall Holmes. And Rick is like, oh, we all know who that is. So he leaves to go get some paperwork. Eddie steps up and says, oh, yeah, I remember you. Got your uh, bitch in orders. Like, she's not a bitch. Oh, you one of those guys. And then the conversation of Randall comes up when Rick brings back the paperwork. And Eddie's like, you know what? No, I got this. I got this. So Rick goes off. Um, Eddie pretty much breaks down how, oh, yeah, well, we I can handle that. You know, um, you can get a gun or I can get a gun. We can get a gun, put it on them. You know, they're trying to march like Black Lives Matter. So I'm like, oh, snap. Here we go. So basically, Bennett wants nothing to do with this because he's probably like, damn, these people are crazy than my wife. So he just leaves. And then Eddie goes all sw singing Sweet Home, Sweet Cherry. I'm like, you mock Kelly for reading the Bible and all, but you acting like you don't know them hymns because you've been singing a hymn every damn episode. All right, so then we go over to the uh, law firm. Larry and Carl have a brief meeting. Pleasant ple pleasantries aside, he offers a job of $250,000 a year because it's about $500 now with any clients they have. But at the end of the day, he wants to know from Carl Adams how in the world did he do it? Carl's like, I, I'm quite persuasive and I can't really tell you what's going on since you're representing my opponent. And Larry's like, you know what? The job offer wasn't the real reason I brought you down here. This is just a front because of the fact that if you don't tell me exactly how you did what you did, I'm going to make things a living hell for you to make it so you won't be able to make to work at all in the field of law whatsoever in this town probably not in anywhere in the country if you will because he said he made a few calls to carl's professors and whatnot and saying he was an average student but carl's like no nah, man i was really good shoot what are you talking about and carl obviously wasn't intimidated but he wasn't here for that bullshit so he's like you know what i'm gonna leave so basically larry put carl on his hit list so to speak but i don't know if that's gonna work out too well for larry in the end okay then we go over to Tanya taking out the trash while Randall's also taking out the trash. Tries to say hello. It's like, don't talk to me. So she walks off. What he does, he goes into the trash can like a raccoon at night, finds 
an empty, well, excuse me, a can of red paint, runs to his house, sprays on the wall, seizes a match for the paint that's already there, and most likely puts two and two together. Goes over to see Tanya, ask about the person that vandalized the house. She didn't see anything. She didn't know anything. Then he tries to play doctor with her in regard, not in the fun way, about, you know, whoa, people scream. Hmm, you scream. Yeah, you're good at that. Uh, your parents scream, father scream, you know, when he, what, killed your dog? What is it, your sister? And basically, he's trying to play mind games with her. And at the end of the day, look, I ain't saying nothing's going to happen sexually between the two, but Tanya is obviously, as she told Bennett, finds Randall interesting. So she starts to scream. Marsha looks out the window. Natalie looks out, see what's going on. Then she rushes outside. Randall steps away. And this fool, well, not this fool, but this girl, Natalie, she steps up to Randall, tells him to get off his bull crap and the fact that you need to stop messing with that girl. He starts to mouth off. Natalie picks a freaking branch, like, like a freaking thick branch. This ain't like those go to the bush, get a, a switch off so I can whoop you. That No, no. This was like a legit law. This... this this, this looked like a damn log. She took it and was wearing his butt up. I loved it. Because remember, a couple episodes ago, he had his pants down with his ass hanging out. Imagine if he had done that now. He would have splinters in it. She wails on him. It's like, yeah, you better. Yeah, I want to tell the husband. Yeah, I want to tell her husband. That's what I want to do. It's like, and then he goes in the house and opens the door. Yeah, you do that. And then closes the door again. I was laughing my behind off. Natalie goes over to check on Tanya to, you know, make sure she's okay. And uh, that's about it. So Marcy goes out there to talk with Natalie as well. And um, basically he's like, oh, you shouldn't put a baby on its stomach. And then Marcy says, oh, I didn't know that. And I'm like, did Marcy put the baby on the stomach? I swear she didn't do it. And then Marcy reassures Nat that no, 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 don't get it twisted. I would never hurt that baby on purpose. So then Brad and Marcy are in the house. Um, Alex, Esperanza, and Steven come in. She's drunk. Uh Brad tells Alex he's taking the house. He's taking full custody of all the kids, meaning the baby as well. And she doesn't care. And apparently, oh yeah, I forgot. The kids are at home because this is after 3 o'clock. How is it after 3 o'clock, you might ask? Remember, Carl was supposed to meet Ian and Lucian at his desk at 3 in the last episode. So that meeting did happen with the DA. So it is after 3. The kids are upstairs. Alex tries to go upstairs to tell the kids what's what. And Brad doesn't let her because... He's not going to allow the kids to see their mother the way she is. And I'm wondering, without, with as many people, wait, there's almost half a dozen people downstairs. They're loud. Why aren't the kids coming out? Maybe they'll come out next week. I don't know. So Alex storms off, goes to Randall's. He tells her to get out. She goes down on him after she looks, you know, to find something to drink and notices the fact that the house is torn up. And I'm like, Randall, you lucky dog. And then we have Eddie going over to Natalie's. And guys, I've already did the video earlier today about, you know, Eddie flaunts his white privilege. He goes into the house. Natalie threatens him. I'm going to call Lucian. And he shows her the edited video. And too bad the episode cut off because I wanted to hear if the foul chicka wow wow music was in there. But in any case, that was the episode. What do I think of it? It was pretty good. Um, I'm telling you now, Tyler Perry, when Esperanza and Steven arrived at the bar... This episode would have gotten a 12 out of 10 if Alex did drunk karaoke. But since we did not get that, um, this episode gets 8.5 out of 10. I think it was pretty good from start to finish. So not to mention also the episode went to like 11.02. So we actually had the episode run past 11 o'clock, which was pretty cool. Because when we got to the Alex and um, Randall part, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about that scene uh, with uh, uh, with um, Eddie and Natalie, is that not going to be in this episode? What's going on here? But nope, they put it in there. It was just uh, either too many commercials or I don't know. But in any case, I thought it was a pretty good episode. And I've already done my social media plug. So please subscribe and uh, help this video do well. Because last week, you all blew me away. My, da my damn uh, trailer breakdown got over 20,000 hits. And the episode review did about 13,000 views. So hopefully this week does the same. And I'm going to take a quick break, get some water, you know, you know mouth getting try kind of dry here. And, um, you know, just like the episode, trying to wet my beak at the beginning of the episode, but we got commercials. So, yeah, be on the lookout for my episode trailer breakdown for number eight, The Firm, airing May 19th. So have a great day, everyone, and stay safe.